In this video, I'm going to explain how to propagate uncertainties if you do an experiment and you find that there's an exponential relationship between the variables that you selected. So let's say I do an experiment and my independent variable is mass and every mass has the same uncertainty, 0.2 grams, and I select these values, right? This is the range I decided to test over. I decided that my increment between every two masses would be 0.6 grams. So every mass increases by 0.6 from the previous mass. And then in every single mass that I selected, I did a trial and I measured the velocity, okay? <coughs> now for every mass, let's say I conducted three to five trials and I averaged all of the velocities I got in each of those three to five trials, giving me this value which I've shown here. So I'm not showing all the individual trials because I'm not, I'm not even going to go into that. We don't need it for what I'm demonstrating in this video. So in each of these, and you can see I'm cheating, right? I made a function here. This is an actual, this is not an experiment. I didn't do this experiment. This is, uh, I've designed it so that I have an exponential function. Okay, so anyway, I've got my independent variable here and my dependent variable here. And these are averages based on my three to five trials. For every value of the average velocity, I used the max minus min over two method, the half range method, to find the absolute uncertainty in that velocity. So these are these are the absolute uncertainties in the average velocity. Maybe I should write vav. And let's give that a subscript. And then what I've discovered is that there's an exponential relationship. So subscript. Right? So that means that means that the velocity is equal to some constant, I don't know, 0 0.8, times another constant raised to the power of my independent variable, or mass. So if I were to take 1.5, and let's say in this example, I've discovered through my logarithmic curve fitting that the value of n is 1.5, and the value of k is 0 0.4. This is what I found through my, my analysis, my data analysis. So what I do then is I want to make a final graph where I have average velocity on the y-axis and I have 1.5 raised to the mass on the x-axis because that's how you linearize a, that's the final graph you make whenever we have an exponential function. And here it is, I've shown that. Average velocity is on the y-axis and 1.5 to the mass is on the x-axis. And I've clearly cheated. This is such a straight line. It's perfect. You would add your trend line. Let's display the equation. R squared value. You, that's not always super useful. I mean, it does help, but when you're linearizing your data, don't be deceived. An R squared value doesn't necessarily tell you that you have a straight line, okay? That's different from having a straight line. Sometimes, when we make a straight line, when we linearize our data, well, sometimes to linearize the data, the R squared value has to get worse, okay? So don't look at the R squared value uh, as, as necessarily an indication of whether or not you have a straight line. That doesn't tell you how straight the line is. It just says how close the data points are to the line of best fit. Okay, so there's my function and um, of course, the y is v, and the x is mass raised to the 1.5, and this is 0, right? 1 times 10 to the negative 15, that's 0. There's no y-intercept in my line, and the reason is because I cheated and my data is so good. Okay, this has units of meters per second. This doesn't have units in an exponential function. There's no units in the x-axis ever. <coughs> now, we know we need to add error bars, which means we need the uncertainty and the average velocity and in the value of 1.5 raised to the mass. Here are the absolute uncertainties in average velocity, but we don't have uncertainty in these values. We know that the uncertainty in mass is plus or minus 0.2 grams. So here's how you find the average, vol uh, excuse me, here's how you find the absolute uncertainty in these, these values of 1.5 raised to the mass. And I'm basically what I'm doing is I'm showing you how to propagate 0.2 grams as uncertainty in these values. So what you do is first, 
we're going to do the same thing we did here, which is take 1.5 and raise it to the mass, right? Oops. But since there's uncertainty in the mass, that means that maybe, maybe we shouldn't be taking 1.5 and raising it to 1.2. Maybe it could be 1.5 raised to 1.4, right? Or maybe it could be 1.5 raised to 1.0. Or down here, right? Down here. 3.6. Well, it might not be 3.6. It might actually be 3.8, because there's uncertainty. Or it could be 3.4. So maybe I shouldn't have taken 1.5 and raised it to the power of 3.6. The proper thing might have been to take 1.5 and raise it to the power of 3.8 or 3.4, because of the uncertainty in this mass. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to calculate exactly what I just described. In this column, I'm going to take 1.5 and raise it to the power of the mass plus the uncertainty, which is 0.2 for all of these values. And over here, I'm going to take 1.5 and I'm going to raise it to the power of the mass minus the uncertainty, which is the same for all of these. And if you don't format your cell, right? You have to use these zero buttons. Otherwise, if you don't format your cell, you'll get a bunch of uh, dollars, or sorry, number signs. So to fix the number signs, you just have to decrease the number of zeros. Keep, keep clicking this button, right? If you have something like this, it shows all these, uh, these number signs. So then you just keep clicking this until you get it down to a reasonable number of decimal places. So I'm going to copy these down. And I'm going to fix my formatting with my borders. So I'm going to clear the border, then put an outside border, then put an outside border. And what I've got then are the numbers when I take 1.5 and I raise it to the mass plus the uncertainty. That's in this column. And I get the same thing here. It's 1.5, except now I'm raising to the power of mass minus the uncertainty. <coughs> now. We have a max value and a min value. So to find the absolute uncertainty in each of these, I'm going to take the max minus the min and divide it by 2. So it's max minus min. Oh, I need parentheses. Parentheses. Divided by 2. It's the half range method all over again, right? And let me add some zeros. And I clear the border. I add the outside border. Each of these can only have one sig fig. So 0.1, I can either round that to 0.1, or I could round it up to 0.2. That's a matter of personal choice. If you want, um, so the problem with rounding sig figs here is if you round to 0.1, you're underestimating the absolute uncertainty. And if you round to 0.2, you're overestimating the uncertainty. So it's kind of a lose-lose scenario. You get to choose which one you want to do. I'm just going to round it to 0.1, and I'm going to round this to 0.2. This gets rounded to 0.2, 0.3. This one, you know what? I'm going to make a judgment call. I'm going to round it up to 0.4. So it's 0.349. That's so close to 0.35 that I'm just going to decide to round it up. So let me take away the zeros and then put it at 0.4. Same thing here, you know? That's close enough to point to 0.45, then I'm going to go ahead and round it up to 0.5. And this I will make 0 0.6, 0 0.7 here. And when you do this rounding, it's important that you explain how you're rounding, how you're deciding to round. Now, all of these values need to have the same number of decimal places as their uncertainty, right? Oops, no, they don't. These values over here need to match the uncertainty. So all of these, let me just add a bunch of zeros and we'll start over, right? All of these need to have one decimal place, don't they? Like that. And this shouldn't have any decimal places. So now all of my values of 1.5 to the m, all of these have the same number of decimal places as their uncertainties. So the value matches the precision of the uncertainties. That's what we say. That's really important. And now you can come to your graph, and you can add error bars. So you click somewhere on your graph. You go to Layout, Error Bars, and just do more error bar options, like 
that. And, oops. And it starts you out with the vertical error bars. And uh, on the y-axis, we have average velocity. So the vertical error bars need to include the uncertainty in average velocity. And what's the uncertainty? Oh, I'm hiding it. Let me move this over. Specify value. There's a different uncertainty in each average velocity. So you go to specify value, you click this button. For the positive values, you choose the absolute uncertainties. For the negative, you choose the absolute uncertainties. Right? And we have to use the custom, since there's a different uncertainty in every average velocity. So every y value has a different uncertainty. Hit OK. Come back down to the graph. <coughs> and let's double click on the horizontal error bars. And now it brings up the box that we want. And the uncertainty in the horizontal values, that's the uncertainty in 1.5 to the mass, right? If you look here, the, the x-axis has 1.5 raised to the mass. So you need to add the uncertainties in those 1.5 to the mass values as your horizontal error bars. So you click Specify, right? And I'm going to come up. And for the positive and negative value, you use the same thing. Use the absolute uncertainty in these x values. So these are the x values. These are the absolute uncertainties. You do the same thing here. Hit OK, close, and there it is. Right? There it is. What a beautiful graph. Now, um, I would make a second graph, and you get to choose whether you're going to use the horizontal error bars or the vertical error bars to find the max and min slopes. The best thing to do is just to use whichever are bigger, and only use one set of error bars. You don't need to use two. So the, uh, the choice I would make here is I would use the horizontal error bars, since those are a little bit more noticeable on the graph. And maybe I want to come and double click on my, uh, on my d data points, and I want to make the marker a little bit smaller, right? Built in. So I click marker options, built in, and I'm going to make the size a little bit smaller so that I can see the error bars a little better. That's another trick. All right, and of course this graph is missing a total, an overall title, so you want to add a title as well. Maybe something like uh, title above graph five, so that my graph has a number and I can refer to it easily. Average velocity, or maybe I just want to say linearized data, right? The axes are there. Someone can look at it and read the axes. So I'm just going to say linearized data, data here. Final linearized data, or maybe just linearized data. Whatever you want. Whatever you think is appropriate. And that's how you propagate uncertainty through an exponential function. Right? All of these masses, we added the absolute uncertainty, and we subtracted the absolute uncertainty. And then we raised the base 1.5, not to the m, but to the maximum m that we could have had, right, which would have been 1.4 for this first value. And then we raised it to the minimum value of m we could have had, which would have been 1.0. And then we used the resulting max and mins to find the absolute uncertainty.